Welcome to the session, new NX Sketch Solver. Here's the agenda for today's session. First, we're gonna start with the solver, relations, and then the dimensions. The fourth step would be, we'll talk about how to create remote findings. And then at the last, we'll create a complete sketch. Last but not the least, we'll put some fantastic design intents to the sketch. Your host, Gaurav Bakshi, and now let's get down to the topics. Let's start with topic, curves and dimension. With new sketch, all you really need to create and to fully define your sketch is to dimension them. At the end of the day, dimensions are stronger than the relations. So remember, in order to completely define your sketch, all you really need is curves and dimensions. Let's look at the relation in the sketch. A relation exists only when you need to make changes in the sketch. They do not exist outside of it. Things to know about relation also is when you use the make command. Make command is really used to create geometric condition that can later be found by the relation finder and the solver. It does not create a relation that is persistent. While editing the dimension, the solver will prompt with the side it is going to move. If you do not like that, you can pick the other end of the arrowhead. Also, when you pick one curve to move with the dimension, you could also add another curve to be considered while making that move. You can also create expression on the fly, just type equal and you automatically create an expression. Sketch has status such as fully defined or partially defined. Once the sketch is fully defined, the curves will turn black and you long, no longer can drag any other curve. One proactive tip to remember is to create a remote relation by using reference curve. You will see some of that in an upcoming demonstration. One thing about the expression in new sketcher, user should remember to publish out or to create an expression for the dimension. He needs to drive the sketch from outside that is one of the main benefit of the sketch. There's a brand new command introduced in new sketcher called include and is capable to bring in any external geometry and reference it into the sketch. You'll see a demonstration of it coming up shortly. There are also other ways to bring in external geometry that we will discuss in detail later on. We now step into a demonstration part of the presentation. This demonstration is really broken down into three main categories. First, we're gonna cover some of the basics. Then we're gonna go create a complete sketch from the scratch. And after we complete that sketch, we're gonna capture some design intent and add some parametric expression onto it. The very first demo will show some of the basics. This will show you how you're gonna use the make command, how you can move around curves, how you can take advantage by putting solver into action and you'll see some of the power of the solver. Now on with the demo. Let's go ahead and start sketching. I'll create a line and here you can see if I pick that line, I can drag, move that line. Even if I pick that end point, I can rotate that line as well. Let's create another line which is connected to our first line and I'll make them perpendicular by our make command. And as soon as I make those two lines perpendicular, I can only extend it. However, here you can see, I won't be able to rotate that line. Now let's define these lines and give it a dimension. Here you will see, as soon as I give it a dimension, I neither can rotate it or can extend those lines. All right, let's try something different. I'll create one line as before. Now I'll create another line, which is at a distance to our first line. You can see I can pick that line, even rotate it through the end point. But as soon I give it a perpendicular relationship, you can see that line will be perpendicular to the other line, no matter how I rotate it. And that's what we call remote relations. In this example, we're gonna go ahead and execute the power of the solver. I'll create four circles by only giving the dimension for 
the first circle. I'll make sure that I create holes with the helpers line. As soon as I change the dimension for my first hole, you will see all the other hole changing their dimension as well. If I cl click on any circle, you will see uh, New Sketch Solver has made the constraints such as vertical, horizontal and equal with other circles. In this example, we are going to create a rectangle on the center of our sketch. While I create this sketch, you will notice few things. I will only use two dimensions in order to fully de define the sketch. This will be because while I will be creating a sketch in a new sketch solver, it will automatically place vertical and horizontal relation to the sketch. The other thing I would do is I'll increase the text size by going to view tab. What if I want to change the dimension? Simple and easy. Rather than giving me an error, Solid Edge will relax the existing relation and will give me the result I desire. Last but not the least, I'll create this 80 dimension to my expression. Now I'll screw the sketch out to give my sketch a final shape. Let's create a cutout on the face of this model. In this sketch, I will use a command called include command. What it will do is it will add or include the geometry to this existing sketch. While making the sketch, I'll make sure that this line is parallel to the edge. I will fully define this sketch by giving all the dimension that is required. Because in the new sketch solver, dimension weighs more than the constraints. Now that the sketch is fully defined, I'll go ahead and create a cutout. Now I will refer back to the expression that I've created. Now if I would change this expression to any other value, you will see the cutout would change as well. And that's how expression can help in the new sketch solver. Let's go ahead and create this entire sketch. What I will do is I will go step by step and will walk you through how you can create a sketch like this and make sure it is fully defined at the end of the day. Let's take a look at creating our part from the scratch. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and create three circles at three different prime location. The two smaller circles would be of 25 inches and the one bigger circle would be of 60 inches. Before Before I move forward I'll make sure that my sketch is fully defined so I'll give it a circular dimension. 40 inches apart from x and y axis the distance between the smaller circle would be 113 inches now I will complete the outline of my sketch I'll create two lines one will be prepared tangent to the circle and another would be a horizontal line let's trim the non-required part I'll give it a fillet of radius 30 now I will create three arcs circle to the line circle to circle and then again circle to circle I'll use my make command to make all the R's tangent to each other.
now that my all arcs are tangent I'll give dimension to my sketch in order to make it fully defined all the arcs would be 30 in radius the angle would be 30 degrees and the horizontal line would be 40 inches apart from x-axis and the sketch is fully defined now I'll move on to the next step what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and create all the offsets in this example I'm using three different values for offsets such as 5, 10 and 7 Now that my offsets are created, I'm going to trim the curves which I don't need. After I trim all my curves, you would see the blue shaded area, which will define that my sketch is fully enclosed. I don't have any overlapping or anything. See now? Now let's add dimension to make my sketch fully defined. Last step is to create three circles. The two circles would be of 16 inches. Last circle will be of 40 inches. And as soon as I give the dimension, you would see my sketch will be fully defined. As I can see, the curves are all black. Let's talk about how to capture design intent. With our fully defined sketch, what we're gonna do now is derive the paramedics to it. So you can see that my sketch does work. Everything behaves when I move the dimensions. Now let's tie these two values. I will add expression to both of these value. However, I'll make my one expression which will be P1 driven by P0. What I could do is tie this dimension with an already created expression. Instead, I'll delete it. And I will create a curve joining the center of the circle. And I'll make it a reference geometry. Here you can clearly see the benefit of design intent. My sketch is still fully defined and my one expression is driving the sketch.